Hi, I'm uh, Joel Saltz, uh, Chair of Biomedical Informatics, and uh, a, a pale substitute, perhaps, for uh, Dean Kashansky. But I was asked to uh, say a few words. First thing, welcome everybody. This is a, a great group and a very exciting set of boot camps and a really uh, key component of our educational effort in biomedical informatics, which, as Mary was talking about, spans certificate programs, uh, fellow fellowships, uh, both um, boot camps here and soon in, uh, in Manhattan. So what I thought I'd do, actually, is to say a few words about machine learning and artificial intelligence and the learning healthcare system to maybe contextualize a little bit of this stuff in sort of a broader, uh, broader sense. So how many people have heard of the learning healthcare system? So a few people. So, 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 so this, this came out of the uh, National Academy of Science Institute uh, for Medicine well over 10 years ago. And the big picture is that rather than dealing with patients in an episodic sort of way, you have a system that in one way or another manages to capture the essential both physical, uh, sociologic, uh, demographic, uh, you know, health, health issues, resource issues having to do with people, not really just patients, people, and the notion of um, preventive medicine, um, health, keeping people healthy, not waiting till people get sick to intervene. The, the, the notion that you actually have a very fluid, interactive, uh, highly interoperative healthcare system. So this was, this was articulated, um, as I said, well over 10, 10 years ago. And, and really, frankly, it was not entirely clear how this would be carried out. So the notion of telehealth is a key piece of this in the sense that as long as you have institutions that accept patients, patient person gets sick or a person, person wants to exercise or stay well or whatever it is, as long as you have these little silos and people go from one to the other, then you don't really have a mechanism of saying, okay, big picture, how is our population uh, doing? And so telehealth is a really essential component of this in the sense that if people um, want to be part of a system where their potential risks are tracked, then certainly even the sort of normal mechanisms of, of um, you know, tracking exercise and, and, and um, steps and heart rate and things that are at this point increasingly passively uh, collected uh, by 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 um, by uh, smartphones can be can be sucked into this to this system, and then for patients, people who are say re, say discharged post surgery or where they're uh, congestive heart failure or in the midst of, of cancer treatment where you need more intensive monitoring, you have the ability to do this. So 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 telehealth is really the essential glue that will be needed to produce this sort of overarching population health um, system. So, 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 so I'm going to say a few things about some of the really exciting informatics challenges that go into this. As I said, 10 years ago, really, I don't think there was a clear concept as to how one could actually do this stuff. There's still huge hurdles, but from a technology point of view, advances in machine learning and what's currently called artificial intelligence have made the development of methods to do these sorts of deduction, the sort of learning, the sort of reasoning uh, that will be needed to do these sorts of things, you know, much closer to reality. So um, the good news for you guys is since, since, since I wasn't planning to talk this, 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 this morning, I'll be talking later, I don't have slides, okay? But, but, um, but there are, I, 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 I or really anybody else in the field uh, could give you know, a long review talk of the use of machine learning and artificial intelligence in lots of different areas. Okay, the areas that we focused in have been pathology and in deducing diseases uh, um, from uh, medical population data that might not otherwise be uh, obvious. But there's a big effort in intensive care uh, machine learning, and there's also some efforts, and I think this is really a huge sweet spot for our institution in application of artificial intelligence and machine learning to uh, reasoning and aggregation and risk analysis per pertaining to um, far-flung populations connected by telehealth. And I think this is, it's, it's clearly a huge opportunity, 
And, and, and I'll list a few sub-issues and then, and then you know, let, let, let the group get on to, to its day. Okay, so, so one, one, one obvious issue is how to take heterogeneous collections of information from health systems, from hospitals, from various providers, inpatient, outpatient, form a global view of, of, of patients, their issues, uh, challenges, and of people and what, you know, what, what um, preventive uh, methods need to be uh, carried out. Okay, then the next issue, which I'm sure many of you are thinking about as I say this, is privacy and regulation. Okay, so how, so how do we do this in such a way that you're not invading on people's privacy if you say, well, you know, we're gonna suck in all information about you and make decisions, that's, you know, that's nice, but not everybody's gonna buy into this. And, and, and I don't have time to go into details, but there's actually quite a bit of work that's being done in this area of, of essentially disconnecting the decision-making component of artificial intelligence from the detailed personal data that drives it. And so, for instance, there are quite a number of groups, many of them in other sectors, uh, energy and, and defense, where uh, computation and reasoning is done far away from the center. So in other words, you have a patient, they have some sort of telehealth device in their home, it could be their smartphone. So the analysis would happen locally or on a part of the cloud that only they have access to with information needed to make decisions transmitted, but only you know, by permission of the patient, but no actual identifying information or you know, very, little, very little information that would be of concern or no information that would be of concern to the person would have to go over the wire. So there's a lot going on in the rest of, 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 of um, the computational science world that can address many of these critical issues. Um, the regulatory stuff I have to leave for somebody else, um, but certainly the um, communication of decision-making information rather than necessarily a lot of, um, of, of, of personal health information should certainly ease, ease the way. So, so let, me, let me close by talking about a few things that are exciting at Stony Brook and people may want to get in, involved in. So we're kicking off, and it's gradually gathering steam, but it's going to be growing quite quickly, uh, an institute for engineering and medicine, which will be aggregating a lot of this sort of uh, work, uh, with actually a building being built uh, um, out in the uh, Seawit area, along with resources for a variety of different types of of, of equipment, both computation and otherwise. And the money was allocated by the state. This is you know, gradually gathering momentum, but this is gonna be a big deal in the next few years. There's also an, art, an artificial intelligence institute uh, led by Steve Skeena, and um, a number of us, Kishans, Ken Kishansky and, 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 and Fotis, uh, the engineering dean and, and myself and Steve and a few of us, uh, put in a proposal to the state and got funding for a few faculty. So we're recruiting one faculty for artificial intelligence uh, in biomedical informatics. So anybody who knows anybody who might want to apply uh, is great. We, we have a postdoc, but also it's providing a very nice umbrella for actually our several machine learning artificial intelligence um, efforts. And, 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 and I think it, it, at the moment, at the moment, the two major ones, at least that I'm involved in, and there are a few others involve um, patient characterization, uh, which is also one that Mary actually really leads, uh, and one involving pathology. And, and I'm sort of putting forth the notion that actually telehealth could perhaps be a third, because it's a tremendously uh, ripe uh, area for, for this. So anyway, welcome. And I'll be, I'll be, uh, I'll be, be, be back around noon, and um, looking forward to talking to, to folks then. Thanks. <laughs>